All right. Good morning. So today we are going to talk about segmenting the market. So segmenting the market is one of the three steps in the STP process. Segmenting and then targeting and then positioning. That's the final step. And all of this is uh, part of market targeting. So we're going to talk about segmenting and then we're going to talk about the two ways, well, there, there are other ways, but we're going to start with two, the two ways to do that, which will be um, segmenting by demographic and also segmenting by psychographics. Okay, so um, have you been notified that the recording has started? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. All right, so we go to the first slide. As soon as I figure out how. <laughs> okay. All right. So why do we need to segment the market? Okay. So primarily because, as it says here, not everybody's likely to be interested in any idea, product, or service that the client wants to sell. So segmenting the market provides focus for the advertising campaign and also allows for um, resources to not be wasted because we know specifically who would be the, the best or the better audience for our client if we're an advertising agency. And then we have before an advertiser can decide what a campaign should say, the advertiser needs to devote time identifying the target of the message. So that's why we have to conduct what we call target marketing. Okay? So in target marketing, we identify the types of people who are most likely to want the product and also the types of people whose needs the product or the service can satisfy. And like I said earlier, um, this can be done through a process called STP, segmenting, targeting, and positioning okay so number one is segmenting so what do we mean by segmenting imagine a big delicious pizza pie okay so when you slice the pie we are segmenting it we're subdividing it but in the context of marketing and advertising when we segment we subdivide the population into who we think, uh, sorry, and to help who we think we are about, okay, I'm getting tongue-tied. One more time. Subdivide the population to help you think about who are and who are not the potential customers for the product and to also find out who are the potential audience of the advertising. And maybe Chachu, could you read number two, please? Targeting picks the segments for the campaign that will be focus of the advertising. Thank you. So you divided the pizza pie and now you choose which slices of the pie. Okay. And finally, we have positioning and Ate Don has joined us. Don, could you read number three, please? Positioning. Positioning is how to think the relationship between your product and customer or audience with the purpose of this guys this distinguishing your product from the competition. Okay. So the key here is to position the product in such a way that it highlights what makes it unique, what makes it stand out from the competition. Okay, so we go to Malino po, STP, S, segmenting, P, targeting, and P, positioning. Okay, all right. So in short, STP will serve as a framework for understanding. So it's kind of like in journalism, we have some WH questions, but they're slightly different. They're in the context of marketing and advertising. So who... Who are the customers? How many? How many customers are there? Where do they live? How do they spend their time? And what is their motivation or why? Why do they buy? 
Okay, so all of these ideally can be answered through the STP process. So now we're going to go to the main topic for today, which is segmentation, the first in the process. So segmentation is when we divide a large market into smaller pieces, but we have to do that using a meaningful and measurable way of understanding their shared characteristics. Okay, and when we say a meaningful, uh, when, we, when we talk about, sorry, meaningful and measurable shared characteristics, we can refer to the demographics, the psychographics, and the behavior. And we're going to talk about that a little more later. Okay, the next thing on the slide is that it says it's crucial or important to slice up the pie so you can focus all the resources of the ad campaign on the customers whose needs we have the best chance of satisfying. All right, so then if you have any questions at any point, um, just feel free to ask. Okay, so for example, this is what we could call a segment. Okay, so if we're targeting the upper income unmarried men with a college education. So that's a much better target than just saying people in general. So we are able to, to focus the resources of the ad campaign on just the upper income, unmarried men with a college education. Okay, so segmenting the population provides focus and specificity. Okay, major made up Sabine word, specificity on those people most likely to buy your product. So think of it this way. Why is it important to target the right market and to do the STP process? Anong mas gusto nyo? Um, Five million people who are 80% likely to buy or the other way around, 80 million people but are only 5% likely or have a 5% chance of buying. So... Obviously, we would prefer the first uh, group, the former group, okay? So in, in a nutshell, that kind of clarifies bakit mahalaga ang market segmentation, why we need to target the correct uh, segment of the market. Okay, so now we go to one of the two ways. Actually, there are more than two ways, but for today, we'll focus on just two. One of the two ways to segment the market. And the first one is demographics. So obviously, you're familiar with this in your other subjects, maybe even in thesis writing, you've talked about demographics. So demographics, the main thing about them is they're measurable, okay? The variable or demographic can be defined in terms of a small number. This number can be either in the form of a category or in the form of a range, when you say a range from one thing to another. So for example, one very common demographic is age, okay? So it would be easier to refer to 30 to 40 year olds in aggregate or in total or as a group, rather than to talk about them First, the 30-year-olds, and then the 31s, then the 32s, and the 33s, and so forth. So that's why demographics are often expressed in a range. Or later on, you'll also see examples where they're expressed in categories. Okay, so that's demographics. And here are more examples. I'll read the first one. So gender, so gender of the individual or head of household. So obviously gender is not in terms of range, but in terms of category, male or female. Then we also have age. So age, for example, the range of 18 to 24. By the way, EG, um, it's, it means exempli gratia. Exempli gratia, it's, in modern English, it is, for example, Okay, so maybe who's joined us already? Um, Camille, could you please read Life Stage? Life Stage. Example, example. Emptiness, emptiness parents who have more time for each other now that their kids are in college. 
Thank you so much. So what are empty nest parents? Who can tell me? Um, empty nest, pugad na wala nang laman. So using that imagery, what do you think it means when we say empty nest parents? What is the nest? So the nest is the home. Okay. So pag lumaki na yung mga anak, um, in American culture anyway, usually they, they leave the home and mm. they, they start doing their own thing, right? And so the parents are left with an empty nest. Okay. So life stage in America, for example, at some point, it's only the parents who will be left li living at home. So they become what we call empty nest parents because the kids are either grown up and working or they're grown up and they've gone to college or university. Okay. And the next one is household income. We also have education, occupation, race, or ethnicity. So in this case, African American, which is uh, the politically correct term for describing people of color, African American. And then we have religion and SES or socioeconomic status. And an example of that could be the category dinks. Okay. I think dink. A dink is a double income, no kids. So this could be a family where both uh, the husband and the wife are working and they have no children. So we would classify them as dinks. Okay. And no questions. So we proceed. Okay. So aside from demographic segmentation, we can also consider geographic segmentation. And geography plays three roles in target marketing. The first is customer and market characteristics. So the geography helps define the climate, the culture, and the customer density. So climate, maybe this is not so applicable in the Philippines, but in America, it's such a big country, um, sometimes the, the weather systems differ from one end of the U.S. to another. So the climate during a specific time of the year might be different in New York as compared to say in California, and therefore that would have an effect on how we segment the market. The cultures can also differ by geography. Um, for example, in Spain, the weather systems in the north of Spain and in southern Spain are very different, and some people say this affects uh, the mood of the people. So they, they some people claim that um, the mood of the people in the north is different from the mood they have in the south because I can't remember which part of the country, but there's a part of Spain where it rains a lot. And then there's a part of the country where it's almost always sunny. So if you live in the part of the country where it's always raining, obviously that will have an effect. It might dampen your mood. So uh, same thing for culture. And then customer density. This refers to how many customers there are in a particular area. Imagine nakatira ka, uh, yung customers nyo sa uh, bulubundukin, sa malayong malayong tagong lugar, far from um, the, the commercial hubs or the centers of industry. So it might be dif more difficult to reach those customers because geographically they're more remote. Okay? So here are some more examples. Um, let's try Jamal. Good morning, Jamal. Could you read the first uh, example? Morning, Sen. Morning, po. Think about where people buy new snowshoes the time of year with westerners, cold backyard barbecues, or the differences between laid-back Southern Californians and ambitious New Yorkers. Okay, so thank you, Joms. 